Now, many of you remind me time and again what a long way the law school has come in these 40 years. It grew from a new school that was founded in 1970 with no alumni and no name recognition. In just a few years, it had become a truly formidable academic powerhouse. There is a story that I keep on hearing, and I have to admit, I love hearing it every time it is being told. In the mid-1970s, a Harvard law professor uh, was asked about um, his thoughts about the legal academy. And his, answers wa his answer was that one of the most exciting places in legal acad education today is Hofstra Law School. Now, it was during those years also that Hofstra Law, I think, accomplished something that is almost unimaginable today. It managed to place its alumni, and keep in mind I said no alumni network at the time, in truly high-powered position, from Crevasse, Swain and Moore, to other white shoe firms in New York City. Really prestigious federal clerkships um, and first-rate government positions. And I do think that is the credit to our hardworking students and the dedicated faculty at that time. Now, in the years after those initial founding days, the pioneer spirit obviously had to recede, and the school settled into its 20s and 30s. That's the time when it truly begins to share in the successes of its alumni. It benefits from the reputation that the faculty has built for itself and for the school as a whole. It also continues to train generations of young lawyers who spread their wings and begin to practice all around the country. And now, I think we have yet reached another stage for this institution. It is a time of greater maturity, a time of yet greater successes for the law school, but also a time to really look back and to some extent hark back to our foundation. On the day we were expecting the first class, that is, the people, the students who are going to attend, I was standing next to Maliki, trying to get something from him, of course. But I don't remember exactly what I said, but it had something to do with what my thoughts were at the time. And Maliki really set the stage beautifully for me. As he told me, he said, you know what I've been thinking about? And I recall it, well, I'm wondering how many, if any, are going to show up. <laughs> <laughs> and that certainly sets, sets the stage for the beginning of the law school and the kinds of thoughts that went through our minds. You initiated or agreed to the initiation of our neighborhood law office, which at the time was fairly different. It was unique. Yeah. Yeah, that, I, I wasn't sure if there were others, because I don't remember any others. Uh, so I don't like to make claims that you're likely to refute every time I open my mouth. <laughs> it is my won't. <laughs> uh, it really was unique. Uh, when we got the appellate division approval, uh, Klepper, which is the Ford Foundation financed arm to encourage uh, clinical education around the country. Uh, Pincus was the president of it, a man named Pincus. He came and he visited the uh, clinic, which was in a small office above a fish store in Hempstead. And uh, he liked what he saw, and he wrote up, uh, rather, he had David Cadane write an article for their magazine that they distributed to, routinely to faculty all across the country. And 5,000 copies went out of an issue extolling uh, the Hofstra Clinic as a, a model for other schools. This was in our second year, I think, no later than our third year, the beginning of the third year. And NYU, Bob McKay, the dean of NYU, told me uh, one day at a cocktail party, we followed your lead. We're opening our own clinic instead of dealing with outhouse placements uh, for uh, hands-on education. So, one of the things I'd like to say is that I had it very easy. Maliki did all the hard work in three years, which I, I think is a, is a record that stands alone. 
in three years, he got full accreditation for this law school. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. Two and a half years. <laughs> and, and I was able to come in, and, and all of the hard work was done. Uh, one thing I'm proud of is having persuaded Stuart Rabinowitz to go into administration and be my associate dean. And, uh, and, and another uh, is, is the faculty that we attracted and that we kept. And, and another thing is, was, was uh, participating in, in, in improving, in spreading the reputation of the law school. Uh, and, and another was emphasizing teaching and spending time with students over publications. That is not to say that we did not have a lot of high-level publications from this faculty, and, and specifically from the three people that I mentioned. Not because they were made to publish, but because they loved to publish. Uh, and, uh, but, but most, most of all, I'm, I'm proud of our students. Uh, and, and those particularly who came here as uh, uh, new students when I was dean, I did virtually all of the admissions work and, and very carefully read every single application for admission to the law school and paid attention to qualities that went way beyond LSAT and grade point average overall. And as a result of that, we got some really exceptional people here, and they have become superb lawyers, and that is what I am most proud of. The thing that strikes, the reason I think this law school has been so successful, and the reason I know it will continue to be, is I, I truly never remember anyone thinking, at least back in my time, that anything was beyond our reach. I, I really mean that. I mean, we got together and we just assumed we could be the best law school in the country eventually. I mean, yeah, we needed to build up an endowment and this and the other thing, and it would take us some time, but we, we, you know, we always set our sights on being excellent and being the best. And that's why I think we've come so far in what is a very short time for law schools. And, you know, frankly, when I got to, into the university presidency, it's, it's what, what I took away from the law school. I actually didn't think the university unanimously had that in mind. I mean, they, would, they were settling for being the best on Long Island or the best regional this or the best regional that. I mean, we never had that. We, always, we didn't think it was worth doing unless we were going to be as good as anybody in the country. And, and I think that has imbued everything that we have done, and if you keep it up, you, you'll get there because a lot of people don't have that attitude. 